Welcome to AmirAcademy.com. Let us go mini trip on economics. That is, we'll discuss shortly about economic thoughts and history. Economic is the social science that studies the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. Economics focuses on the behavior and interaction of economic agents and how economic works. Macroeconomics analyzes what is viewed as basic elements in the economy, including individual agents and markets, their interaction and the outcomes of interactions. Individual agents may include, for example, household, fence, buyers and sellers. Macroeconomics analyzes the economy as a system where production, consumption, savings, and investment interact and factors affecting it. Employment of the resources of labor, capital and land, currency inflation, economic growth and public policies that have impact on these elements. The earlier term for the discipline was political economy, but since the late 19th century it has commonly called economics. The term is derived from the ancient Greek oikonomikos, practiced in the management of a household or family. <clears throat> there are a variety of modern definitions of economics. Some reflect evolving views of the subject or different views among economics. Let us see what are they. Scottish philosopher Adam Smith 1776 defined what was that then called political economy as an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations in particular as a branch of the science of a statesman or legislator with the twofold subjects of twofold objectives of providing a plentiful revenue or subsistences of people and to supply the state or commonwealth with their revenues for the public services. Jean Baptiste says distinguishing the subject from its public policy uses defined it as the science of production, distribution and consumption of wealth. On the satirical side, Thomas Khalil coined the dismal science as an efficient for classical economics in this context, commonly linked to the pessimistic analysis of Malthus. John Stuart Mill defined the subject in a social context as the science which traces the law of such of the phenomena of society as arise from the combined operations of mankind for the production of wealth in so far as those phenomena are not modified by the pursuit of any other subject. Alfred Marshall provide, provided a still, still widely cited definition in his textbook Principles of economics that extended analysis beyond wealth and from the so societal to the microeconomic level. Economic is a study of man in the ordinary business of life. It inquires how he gets his income and how he uses it. This is a main concept of economics. Thus, it is on the one side the study of wealth and on the others, others and more important, important side a part of the study of man. Lionel Robbins developed implication of what has been termed perhaps the most commonly accepted current definition of the subject. Economics is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses.
Now, history of economic thoughts and history of macroeconomic thoughts, let us go through. Two groups of two groups who later were called mercantilists and physiocrats more directly influenced the subsequent development of the subject. Both groups were associated with the rise of economic nationalism and modern capitalism in Europe. Mercantilism was an economic doctrine that flourished from the 16th to 18th century in a prolific, prolific pamphlets in literature, whether the merchants or statesmen. It held that a nation's wealth depends on its accumulation of gold and silver. Nations without access to mines could obtain gold and silver from trade only by selling goods abroad and restricting imports other than the gold and silver. The doctrine called for importing cheap raw materials to be used in manufacturing goods which could be exported and for state regulation to impose protective tariffs on foreign manufactured goods and prohibit manufacturing in the colonies. Physiocrats, a group of 18th century French thinkers and writers, developed the idea of the economy as a circular flow of income and output. Physiocrats believed that only agricultural production generated a clear surplus over cost so that agriculture was the basis of all wealth. Thus, they opposed the mercantilist policy of promoting manufacturing and trade at the expense of agriculture, including import tariffs. Physiocrats advocated replacing administratively costly tax collection with a single tax on income of landowners. Adam Smith, 1723 to 17. 90 was an early economist theorist. Smith was harshly critical of the mercantilists but described the physiocratic system with all its imperfections as perhaps the purest approximation to the truth that has yet been published on the subject. The publication of Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations in 1776 has been described as the effective birth of economics as a separate discipline. The book identified land, labor and capital as the three factors of production and the major contributors to a nation's wealth. A distinct from the physiocratic idea that only agriculture was the productive. Smith discusses potential benefits of specialization by division of labor, including increased labor productivity and gain from trade, whether between town and country or across countries. His theorem that the division of labor is limited by the extent of the market has been described as the core of theory of the function of film and industry and a fundamental principle of economic organization. To Smith has also been ascribed the most important sub substance, substantive proposition in all of the economics and foundation of resource location theory, that under competition, resource owners of labor, land and capital seek their most profitably use, profitable uses resulting in an equal rate of return of all uses in equilibrium adjusted for apparent differences arising from such factors as training and un unemployment. The Reverend Thomas Robert Malthus in 1798 used the concept of diminishing return to explain low living standards human population, he argued, tended to increase geometrically, outspring the production of food, which is increased arithmetically. The force of rapidly growing population against a limited amount of land meant diminishing returns to labor. The result, he claimed, was chronically low wages, which prevented the standard of living 
for most of the population from rising above the subsistence level. Value theory was important in classical theory. Smith wrote that the real price of everything is the toil and the trouble of acquiring it. Smith maintained that with rent and profit, other costs besides wages also enter the price of commodity. Other classical economics presented variations on Smith termed the labor theory of value. Classical economics focused on the tendency of any market economy to settle in the final stationary state made up of constant stock of physical wealth, that is capital, and a constant population size. Marxism economics. Marxist, later Marxian economics descends from classical economics and it derives from the work of Karl Marx. The first volume of Marx's major work, Das Kapital, was published in German in 1867. In it, Marx focused on the labor theory of value and the theory of surplus value which he believed explained the exploitation of labor by capital. The labor theory of value held that the value of an exchanged commodity was determined by the labor that went into the, its production and the theory of surplus value demonstrated how the workers only got paid a proportion of the value their work had created. Neoclassical Economics at the dawn as a social science, economics was defined the, and discussed at length as the study of production, distribution and consumption of wealth by Jean Baptiste Baptiste says in his treatise on political economy or production, distribution and consumption of wealth. These three items are considered by the science only in relation to the increase or diminu diminution of wealth and not in reference to their processes of execution. Economic is the science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. Keynesian economics, that is post-Keynesian economics. Keynesian economics derives from the John Maynard Keynes, in particular his book, The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money, which ensured in contemporary macroeconomics as a distinct field. The book focused on determinants of national income in the short run when prices are relatively inflexible. Keynes attempted to explain in broad theoretical detail why high labor market unemployment might not be self-correcting due to low effective demand and why even price flexibility and monetary policy might be unavailing. The term revolutionary has been applied to the book in its impact on economic analysis. Chicago School of Economics The Chicago School of Economics is best known for its free market advocacy, advocacy and monetarist idea. According to Milton Friedman and monetarists, market economics are inherently stable in the money study does not greatly expand or contract. Austrian School The Austrian School emphasizes human action, property rights and the freedom on contract and transacts to have a thriving and successful economy. It also emphasizes that the state should play an infinitesimally small role, if any role, in the regulation of economic activity between two transacting parties. 
a key component of Austrian economic is the principle of sound money. Some schools of other economic, some school of economics. You have done. Please subscribe our YouTube channel.